Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Maria. If you watch this video and you enjoy it, don't be shy. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for any future videos on narcissistic abuse recovery and complex post-traumatic stress disorder. All right, so today we are going to get into the topic of what it is like to date someone who has CPTSD. If you aren't quite sure what CPTSD is, it is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, if you made your way to this video, you most likely either have CPTSD or know someone who has. So what it is in a nutshell is long-term emotional abuse. So basically it can come from narcissistic abuse, it could come from bullying, anything that, any type of abuse that happened over an extended period of time. And after you go um, through this trauma, it affects your brain in a way that you have a part of your brain called the limbic system. And in the limbic system, you have the hippocampus and you have the amygdala. So the hippocampus uh, is the part of the brain that houses your memory, okay? And it also houses your the way in which we gather new information, so the way in which we learn. And then you have the amygdala, and that is the part of the brain that houses our emotions, so our reactions to things. Well, a lot of times when we go through something um, such as long-term narcissistic abuse, what this does is it damages the brain cells in the hippocampus. So that makes the hippocampus shrink. When that happens, it uh, magnitudes what's going on in the amygdala and we work off of emotion. So somebody who goes through CPTSD may work off of more emotions than what you're used to. So there are five different signs or symptoms of CPTSD that you may notice in your partner. And one of them is called toxic shame. So what happened was when they were younger, they were shamed in a way um, where they internalize that shame to believe it is now a part of their identity. So a way in which this may show up is Say you say something to them, um, really honestly, something basic, like you didn't wash the dishes correctly or, you know, something like that. Let's stay with that. You didn't do the laundry right. Okay, so instead of them laughing it off and, you know, just playing around and you might not have meant anything by it, you know, but to them, they think I didn't do something right. That means I'm a bad person. They take insults in a way that means uh, they take it to the point of it, it's very personal to them. It means they, there's something internally wrong with them because they got this wrong. So you know? another sign of CPTSD, it's called emotional flashbacks. So like in PTSD, when a certain traumatic event happened, the survivors have a flashback to that one uh, specific event. So when you go through long-term abuse, like narcissistic abuse, um, you have emotional so flashbacks. So in a relationship, how this might come about is you may be having a bad day. Let's say you come home from work and you're having a bad day. And you say something to your partner in a way that's just not so nice, but it really doesn't have anything to do with them. That reaction that you're getting from your partner, where they feel in turn just so insulted and they react out of emotions, they may be having an emotional flashback. Someone in their past may have treated them that, that way and this is sparking an emotion that happened in the past. So because they fear that, they, they are now transported back to their past and they are reacting in a way right now with you as if they were back in that situation. So they're actually having an emotional flashback. When we have emotional so flashbacks, our left logical brain is completely shut down. Okay. And our right emotional brain is illuminated. 
So we're working off of straight emotions. That's why if you try to have a logical uh, conversation with someone with CPTSD, you might fail because they're literally not working off of their left logical brain. It is completely shut down. So that's an emotional flashback. So the third thing you might notice if you happen to be uh, dating or in a relationship with someone that has CPTSD is that they have social anxiety. Social anxiety is something well known at this point, I think, and uh, this is a sign or symptom of CPTSD. So someone with social anxiety may have a hard time being, you know, in groups of people. They may even have a hard time being on Zoom with their camera on. They can have a hard time going to the store, you know. Social anxiety is something that's crippling. It's very, very terrifying and it creates a lot of self-hate and anxiety that's going on. A lot of negative inner thoughts. A lot of, are people looking at me? Does everyone hate me? Did I say something stupid? Um, a lot of times it's hard to even concentrate on conversations that they may be having with other people because they are so anxious inside. So, so the fourth sign that you may see uh, with your partner who has CPTSD is something called self-abandonment. You may notice that if you get into fights like little quarrels and stuff, you may be fine and be able to move on, but they may constantly think that you're going to leave. This creates a really uncomfortable feeling inside of them, which also creates anxiety, and the anxiety just fuels them to keep thinking you're going to leave. This self-abandonment comes from a feeling they had when they were going through that long-term trauma of thinking that they weren't worth it. They weren't worth anyone staying. Um, they constantly felt like people were going to abandon and leave them. Maybe they had feelings that weren't validated. Now as they're so, older, they abandon themselves. And you may notice that somebody with um, self-abandonment problems, they don't show up for themselves. So they may be people pleasers. You know, their friends may ask them to go out and they don't really want to, but they say yes to things. See, that's them abandoning themselves. They're not standing up for themselves. So when you get into an argument or a fight with them, they may constantly think you're going to leave because they abandoned themselves. So why wouldn't you abandon them? See, this is a sign of CPTSD. Okay, so the fifth and last tip I want to give you about uh, having a partner with CPTSD is they may have something called a vicious inner critic. So your inner critic, um, after you've been through long-term trauma like this, may be on the negative side. So they may be constantly thinking, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty, I'm not handsome, I'm never gonna get that good job, why should I even apply for it? I am definitely not worth it, I'm not worth this relationship. See, these things that they're constantly telling themselves makes it very hard for them to concentrate on other things. It makes them, it, it makes it very hard um, just to function in your day to day life. And these things that they're telling themselves, if you just say to them, um, that's not true, that's okay, uh, but it's not that easy. So these were outside voices that somebody said to them at one point in time. They've internalized these voices to be true and they believed them. So because they believed them, somebody told them that. They have been on this hamster wheel for years. So there's a path in their subconscious mind that goes over and over again of I'm not good enough. They're going to leave me. I'm not pretty. I'm not... So this is a, a path, this is a loop in their subconscious mind. And because of this, uh, the, it's, they're stuck. They feel like they're stuck and they just, they can't change that. Now, you are able to change this, this vicious inner critic, but the, the way they would have to do it is to create a new path in their subconscious mind, which we can do that by telling ourselves things that are better than how we feel. All right, so if we're not feeling great, by telling ourselves over and over again, 
You're worth it. You're going to get this job. You're going to get this job. You are so smart. You know, by doing this over and over again, uh, before we know it, we are paving a new path in our subconscious mind. So where does this leave you as a partner in this relationship? Well, it's really important for someone with CPTSD to be compassionate with themselves. So that means you need to be compassionate with them too. It's definitely not easy having these things like toxic shame, social anxiety, self-abandonment, a vicious inner critic. Like this stuff isn't easy uh, to deal with. So the more compassion you can show them, the more compassion they'll start to have for themselves. So I guess the baseline is to have awareness. So it would be really beneficial for you to continue researching CPTSD. Another tip would be to encourage your partner to journal. A lot of times when they get these feelings down on paper, it's easier for them to understand and organize their thoughts. So maybe if they're able to reread and go over the information and, and their thought process throughout each week, uh, it might help them to understand why they're reacting with such strong emotions. If you notice your partner reacting out of emotions often, it's really important to just ask them, what do you need? What do you need right now? It seems so basic, but a lot of times it's just, I'm hungry, <laughs> um, I'm tired. There, there's a lot of very simple solutions to CPTSD, but when somebody is working out of their emotions uh, and their emotions are so strong, it's hard to logically have a conversation with them. But if you can just show them that you're there for them with compassion and just ask them something very basic, like, what do you need? This may go a long way. Okay guys, so I'm gonna end right here, but I wanna say that if you do have a partner that has CPTSD, just try to be extra compassionate. What they go through is a lot, and it's a long road of recovery. But if they are aware of this, and they want to recover, you can be a really supportive rock in their life. And I wanna thank you for doing that. Because anyone that's been through this long-term trauma, they know what it's like to need somebody who loves them. And people with CPTSD, their heart's just a little bit bigger. Um, they've been through a lot. So if you watch this video and you enjoy it, don't be shy, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for any future videos on complex post-traumatic stress disorder and narcissistic abuse recovery. Thank you so much. And as always, I wish you all the love in the world.